wants to tell me in their words where the CSA is. Nobody? Zero people? All right. Behind you. Go ahead, Peter. So, say it out loud to everybody. So I've got food, sharing thing, basically I think, and like somebody has a farm or something and they get fresh produce and then they, other people get it, get it from them. Awesome. You got it, yeah. So basically what we do is we, we give local, fresh, sustainably grown produce to people um, in Portland and actually we are Portland's only Jewish CSA. Now I wonder which, what that means, right? What does it mean to be Jewish? Well, we sell things like challah and we sell things like kosher wine and beer, which you guys can't have. And we sell um, like lacto-fermented pickles and sauerkraut and things like that that people think about. But more than that, it's about what Jewish food is in, in our heart, right? If you think about the holidays, where Passover is coming up, right? Um, you have matzah ball soup, you have gefilte fish, you have all these things that maybe you like, maybe you don't. Charosis, who loves charosis? I love charosis. Who awesome. doesn't know who, what charosis is? Can yeah, you tell us? You guys, it's, it's like apples and wine and nuts and cinnamon and sugar all mixed together. It's the good stuff on the Seder plate that you like eating. Um, so those are all memories there. Those are memories that you're making right now and you may not necessarily like think they're awesome or whatever but in time I guarantee you you'll look back and go wow that was so amazing that my mom cooked this for me or my dad or my grandma and so that's part of it is Jewish food's part of the heart part of your history and that history goes back thousands and thousands of years and I'm sure you've heard that a million times over but it doesn't matter what heritage you're from that history comes back thousands and thousands of years of people who passed down food and and put their intention and their love into the food that they make and that is going into your bodies and Jewish food is also about the earth. And I want to invite everyone, so I'm not just talking to you guys, I want to actually shut up for a second and say something, well actually not say something, guide you guys in just listening. Because connecting to, a lot of people call it God, Hashem, the universe, the earth, spirit, love, mystery, whatever you want to call it, connecting to something often means just listening, like Shema, right? Shema is the most sacred prayer. And the first word of Shema is listen. So I want to just guide you for a second. I'm just listening. And feeling what comes in your body as you listen. So let's just do that for about 15 seconds. So just be still and listen. That's Jewish connection to the earth. And food is a huge part of that. And there's so many traditions and rituals we have for blessing our food before the meal, after the meal. Did you guys know that there's about a million different mitzvot about how to raise food? Not just kosher, not just how to eat it, you know, that kind of thing, but actually about how to raise it. You're supposed to leave your corners of the field for the poor. Every seventh year, you're not supposed to even grow food at all, and you're supposed to let the land recharge. There's a Shabbat, there's a rest for the land. Think about that. The land is actually part of a cycle that we are in, and our bodies are made of the land, and we give back to the land in many ways. And that's what Two Parts actually is really all about. And so, I have, an, I have a theory that the most Jewish thing that you can do ever a lot of people would argue with me on this one, is get your hands dirty. Because we are actually made of earth. The word for earth is Adama. And the first person ever created in the Torah, name, his or her name, depending on how you take it, was Adam. Wasn't it, it both? It could be both, right. It wasn't necessarily male any gender. Female. It's male and female together. So Adam was the first person. Adam was made of Adama. See how they come together? Get it? It's not by accident. So we are of the earth, and I think it's so important that we remember that by getting our hands dirty, literally, every now and then, at least. Um, so that being said, I think one of the most sacred things you can do in getting your hands dirty is planting a tree. And this was not my idea. Um, the trees are really sacred things, and they're treated really differently in the Torah and in Judaism. There's a lot of uh, mitzvot around trees in particular. 
But it's funny because there's no actual blessing for planting a tree. They never thought of that one, which is kind of a bummer. But I think it's really important to make some intention when you plant a tree. There yeah. is a day for the trees. There is a day for the trees. There's a birthday for the trees, to Bishrat, absolutely, which is great. And, we're, and it's a good time to think about that, absolutely. But I think right now we're about to plant a tree and to set intention for it. I'd love for you guys to come up with a blessing. So, um, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be in Hebrew. It just has to have intention. So who has an intention that they would like to share before they plant the tree? I want, I want to do kids first. Okay. So as think about planting a tree, thinking about putting this being that's going to live here for 50 years, that you could come back in 50 years and see a tree that high when you are 65, when you're a senior citizen. Think about that. So what intention would you want to give this tree as you're putting in its new home? What wish would you give the tree? What would you hope for it? You hope that the tree is healthy. Can we all say, may you be healthy to the tree. May you be healthy. What else would you wish for the tree? Long life. Go ahead. Long life. Long life? Long life. May you have a long life. May you have a long life. Okay, and how about what would you wish for the world around the tree? What do you think, what do you wish the world could be like in 50 years? Let's do one other person. Go ahead. Um, awesome. So let's say, may you have good soil. May you have good soil. Awesome. And um, I was asked to tell you a little bit about climate change because that's what a lot of this is about. And what I'll say, I think I want to say one thing that maybe you're not expecting. A lot of people are going to tell you, oh, climate change is this big problem, we don't know what to do about it, and it's really scary, and the world's going to change, and all that is true. But the thing that I would wish for you, and I think that we all need in this time, is not necessarily to drive less, or to think about the food we eat, or to do all those things. Yes, we can all lecture about that. But what I want to wish for you, and give you a blessing, is that you have courage. And that's a little bit taken away because the car back there. <laughs> It's okay. It's going to take courage to make this world a better place. And that means you have to do things that are scary. And that means you have to do things that are uncomfortable. But everything that was good in this world, that came from a person, was scary at one point. And it was hard. Think about Martin Luther King marching in the South. Or Gandhi who marched in India. Those were scary things. They almost risked their lives sometimes. I'm not saying you guys have to risk your lives, but I'm saying that it's important to have courage and to stand up for who you are and what you believe in because I guarantee you every one of you has a heart of gold and every one of you wants something amazing for this world. And so whatever that is, I can't tell you what it is. You have to figure it out. But I wish you that you have the courage to figure it out and follow through. So that's what we need to do to make this world a better place and to solve climate change. Amen. Amen. So that's me. I'm setting the intention and Scott is going to lead the, the actual planting. <laughs>